Hey guys, my name is Anand and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Google Ads conversion tracking and I will be explaining why you need to conduct conversion tracking for your campaign, what's the advantages and how to set it up. So let's get started. The first thing is to understand why conversion tracking is necessary and, and why, how it helps. Basically, when you set up your Google Ads campaign, you need to know which campaigns are performing better and which keywords are giving you conversions. Um, and when I say conversion, it can be signing up to a newsletter, filling out a form, or even buying a product. So it's extremely important to understand the performance of your campaign and to know how they are exactly performing in terms of getting you the required you know, marketing objectives. So um, the, the key thing here is to set up conversion tracking for every campaign that you set. And the way you do that is through conversions tab under tools and settings. The first thing that you wanna do is click on this tools and settings and then under measurement, click on conversions. Now, over here right now, I, I don't have any conversions. Basically what you have to do is click on this plus conversions and it's gonna give you four different options. So the first thing is to track conversions from a website. And there are a couple of ways to do that. The first one is to track online sales. And the second one is link clicks. So if you want to find out how many people are clicking on your ads and viewing a landing page. Um, the third one is page views. So it can be your product page views, it can be a simple landing page view or a website page view. And finally you have signups. So if you want to track newsletter signups or it can be as simple as uh, filling out a lead form or a lead magnet form on your landing page. So those are a couple of ways that you can use website conversions. The next thing is to um, track your app. And let's say you have a, uh, an Apple or Android app uh, and you wanna understand how many people are installing that app or how many people are you know, interacting with your app. Um, those are the kind of actions that you can track using app conversions. And then the third one is phone call conversion. Now, a lot of time businesses uh, promote their um, you know, offer through Google ads and they wanna know how many people have um, given a call to their business phone number. So you can actually track how many calls you get from an ad, how many calls um, you get um, to a number on your website or clicks on a number on your mobile site. So that's how you can use the phone call conversion. And then finally, we have the import data option, which is good if you want to understand how many people are converting offline and you wanna attribute those conversions back to your Google ads. So a simple example is, uh, let's say you have a retail store, you're running an ad and you're promoting uh, users or your customers to go and visit the store physically to buy a product. Now, there's no way you can figure that out um, using on using these options because they are going to click on that ad and they're going to go to your retail store. Um, so what you can do is you can import the data from Google Analytics, um, Salesforce, offline lead conversion and full sa uh, phone sales. Now, the best option is offline lead conversions. So if they go to your physical store and if they provide um, more information about themselves, like their email address, first name, last name, you can upload that information back to um, you know, Google Ads and then it will be able to figure out um, using the GCL ID. Um, now, I know it's a bit technical, but if you want to know more about it, uh, let me know in the comment section. But basically my point here is you can track offline conversions and attribute them back to your Google Ads. Now, I'm gonna walk through the, the website conversions because that's the most um, commonly used you know, conversion objective, so let's, let's get into it. So basically, click on website conversions and then over here, um, Google will provide multiple categories. So it can be a purchase, add to basket, begin checkout, subscribe, or you can use um, leads category like 
contact, submitted a lead form, book, booked an appointment, uh, if they filled out um, to receive newsletter, if they requested a code, get directions, outbound click, and then page view, and finally other. So I'm gonna select um, submitted a lead form. That's the conversion name. You can even be more specific and you can say product XYZ. So he basically, he or she basically filled out uh, a lead form that is related to so-and-so product. So just being specific is very important because uh, those conversions will be showing up in your Google ad campaign. Next is to assign a value. So every time they fill out this lead form, you can say um, that lead is worth $50. You can obviously change your currency over here. Um, but um, what, what I suggest is if you are tracking leads, then um, you, can, you can basically um, assign a number or a value and then keep the count as one. So let me, let me give you an example. When you get a lead and um, when that information is stored in your CRM, um, if that lead fills out the form again, the value of the lead is going to be the same. So it doesn't really matter if they keep on filling out the form. It's, it's only valuable uh, once. So this option is recommended for leads, signups and conversions because only the first interaction is valuable. But let's say if, if uh, the, the type of category that you selected is uh, purchase uh, for an e-commerce or um, for an online store, then every time they make a purchase, it's gonna be valuable. So in that case, you can select the count as every. So that's the way you should look at in terms of the, the type of category that you select and the number of times you want to um, count that conversion and obviously you should always make sure that you keep you assign a value because it's important to figure out the cost per lead and then backtrack um, that information to calculate your return on ad spend as we move on you have your click-through conversion window so um, basically you are giving 30-day window for um, for attributing that conversion to that click so it's, it's good to keep it 30, I mean, I, I recommend um, 30, it's a decent life cycle. But let's say if the purchase cycle is long, if it's a B2B kind of conversion and there is a lot of decision making involved, then you can obviously increase this um, to 90 days or 60 days. But 30 days is a good starting point. Um, view through conversion is basically used for display ads. So if you're running any kind of display advertisement, then one day is fine. Um, then you keep this option as it is. Basically, you will see a conversions column and you will get to see which ads are, are giving you conversions. So I recommend checking this box. And then finally, you have attribution model. I have a separate video tutorial in my, in my YouTube channel about all the different attribution models. Um, but basically, last click is when all the credit goes to the conversion based on the last clicked ad. So the last click ad is going to get the cake, <laughs> um, but if you if you have um, you know multiple ads running or if you have a, a type of campaign that that includes a marketing mix, um, then then you can choose a different attribution model. Uh, but but last click is the most commonly used type of attribution model. And then you hit create and continue. Uh, next is Google is going to give you three different options. Um, I'm going to go through in detail how to install the tag using Google Tag Manager. But if you if you don't have Google Tag Manager, then you need to select this first option where uh, Google will ask you to install this global site tag on all your HTML pages. So this code needs to go on all the pages on your website. It needs to be within the head tag and then the conversion tag, which is this one, needs to go only on the page that will be counted as conversion. So you will basically paste this code on the thank you page of that lead form. Um, because this example that we are taking is for um, leads and once they, and I'm, I'm assuming that on your website when the, when the lead fills out a form, they go to a thank you page. So you need to paste this code 
um, on that thank you page within the head tag. And this code, the global site tag needs to be on every page on your website. So that's how you can do using uh, the first option. The third option is using Google Tag Manager and it's actually very easy. You choose this option and then you go to Google Tag Manager, uh, which is tagmanager.google.com. You choose your website and then you click on tags and I'm gonna add a new tag. One, one second, yep, click on new. I'm gonna say product X, Y, Y, Z, lead, and then tag configuration. And then I'm going to say Google ads conversion tracking. So Google is giving you an option by default, which is awesome. So click on Google ads conversion tracking. And now what you have to do is under conversion ID, you simply paste this code. Then you copy the conversion label and you paste it over here. You can ignore these things because um, you can keep it by default. Then under triggering, you click on plus because right now I have all page views and as I have said, you don't want um, the, the conversion tracking to be um, executed on all the pages. It needs to be only on the thank you page. So I already have a thank you page, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. You click on plus and then you will say, um, you will give the trigger a new name. You can say product X, Y, Z. Oh my God, yeah, thank you page. And then trigger configuration is um, on page view. And then you will say some page views and then page path contains slash product X, Y, Z slash Thank you. Now, depending upon your thank you page URL, you will simply paste uh, the path. Um, so that's how it is. You can you can even use um, page URL contains, and then you can uh, paste in the the entire URL of the thank you page, and it should work the same. Um, so so that's how. And I'm gonna go back to page path just so that. Uh, it's clear. So page path contains slash and then the and then the URL of your thank you page. And then you hit save and save and then submit publish and you give a descriptive name saying uh, conversion tracking for product XYZ lead form you can give additional details, hit continue, and that's it. So as you can see, you have now set up conversion tracking on your website using um, the Google Ads conversion tracking uh, feature. So it's as simple as, as that, and then what you can do is you can click on Tools, Conversions, and once you click on that, um, you should get to you should go get to see this screen where you will see um, you know all the conversions that you will be getting from your ad campaign. So that's pretty much it, guys, in terms of conversion tracking. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share. And I will see you next time. Thank you.